Good evening, it's Sarah with House Copper and Cookware. I'm going to do a quick visual today on the different types of seams that coppersmiths use when they are forming copper by hand. I only do this mainly because I think there is a little bit of confusion about it and while some of the smiths I know talk about this, it's not really something that's documented and if you are a collector of old copper cookware you probably want to have a little bit of an understanding of how it's it was made by hand manufactured so I'm going to do a visual on it and I'm going to start with the easiest seam of all which is the lap seam and I don't have copper to show you with this I do have a piece of tin this is a traditional pattern of a tin dustpan that we made but the lap seam looks like this here you've got the metal this metal round piece and it has the edges have been burred up to 90 degree angles and then the metal has just been sat in and then it's been soldered that's a traditional lap seam you also can see it here on the handle it's just a piece of metal that's been folded onto the other there's a good way it's like you know I'm not a photographer and then it's been soldered together there you go it's a lap seam the end so you have a piece of metal that you burr up to 90 degrees you slide the other one in and you solder it there easiest seam ever I don't have to do very much math with it Ooh. also if you ever do do tin work and you want to get hot dip tin this is hot dip tin so can you you see the discoloration in the tin that's how you know you know it's not electroplated by a machine it's been hand dipped into a vat and um, someone's had to then flip it over and dip the other end in the vat and you're gonna get a little discoloration or like a line and you're gonna see the humanity of it the next seam is the cramp seam which can be done two different ways and this copper corn boiler kettle is um, reminiscent of the traditional fur trade kettles in the early 1800s but um, the first is this seam here so that's a that's a cramp seam and what I've done is interlocked the two pieces of copper after turning them and you have to notch them so that you have room for all of your other you know burrs and wiring but simplicity sake you've got you know uh, one piece of copper that you've bent you know cut and bent in this way and the other one comes in like this oh, like like this and you smash them together and therein is your your cramps or crimp seam crimp 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 um, so the crimp seam also can be used on the base and here you can see um, no you can't see again not a photographer this is the body was straight and then the very bottom got burred out and then the base got burred at 90 degrees and then folded over the top I'm trying to see if it's a you know so you can kind of see where there's copper and then copper and uh, we set that seam down and made a cr another crimp seam so you have your copper body that also not a contortionist you do this and then the base comes around and you fold it over and there's your crimp seam along the base you can also take this um, lip and fold it up against the body of the base or of the whole piece and then that is called a double bottom or a double bottom seam or whatever you want to call it um, if you're a tinsmith the last seam is the cramp seam some people will call it a dovetail seam when they see it and um, it looks like it but I guess you know and I don't know where the differentiation comes from but I think I would use dovetail in terms of woodworking and a cramp seam in terms of metalworking but also um, so just to give you a visual reminder of what this looks like so you have your body that was um, cut and formed and then bent over and then the base was fit to that some of this is actually repair work if you can see that <clears throat> now unlike 
woodworking dovetail seams where you've got the teeth on one end and the teeth on the other end and you slide them together and they 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 fit that that's a dovetail seam yes in a cramp seam and I'm looking at it thinking how I'm going to show you a visual of it, but you can't. In a cramp seam, it's the same idea, but the, the, the teeth are kind of slightly on top of each other. So they sit slightly on top of each other, even though they fit together. And then through heating and hammering, you actually smash the two together until they become one thickness. Does that make sense? So, and you also have to braise it because you you need to make it waterproof. But you're um you're you you're actually pushing the metal together to create a single thickness of the metal as opposed to sliding them together and then just brazing you're you're actually heating and smashing so that's what actually makes it a cramp seam it's really hard to do and i don't under i don't blame them for getting rid of this in the early 1800s when there were machines that could make the you know crimp seam um and the lap seam more efficient and fast and waterproof but um yeah it was hard we tried to do it in the shop bob's tried to do it and it's not easy to make a traditional true cramp seam so if you have a piece that has a cramp seam on the base and on the sides you know that it was made in the flat you know that it was handmade and you know it was probably your piece is probably pre-1840s because they really stopped doing it after that um, so there you go. Those are the three seams of copper and tinsmithing. As always, leave your comments, questions, ideas in the um, section below. Thank you for listening and take care.